Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see two pass rushes that have caused more than a few sleepless nights for quarterbacks and offensive coordinators. It's Khalil Mack and Von Miller. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Larry, we are located a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building here in downtown Denver. A moment ago, through a shower of pyrotechnics, it was the hometown Broncos taking the field as they get set to do battle with the Oakland Raiders. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at our matchup here. You've got to believe that this is a game that might be won in the trenches. Oh, without question. This is big person on big person. Big unit against big unit. Meet on me. Oh, you got it all. Pick your cliche. But we know this. The ground's going to shake. Things are going to rumble. And they're going to have an impact on today's game. It's an Indian summer afternoon. Perfect conditions for football, and off we go on EA Sports. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Trevor Simeon ready to take the snaps under center for Denver as the offense comes onto the field in a great week, too. They lit up the Dallas Cowboys, and Trevor Simeon tied a career high four touchdown passes. Understands what his defense gives him, which is usually great field position, and the ability to win games without scoring a lot of points. So Trevor Simeon has some talent as well. He can throw the football. You just outlined it. Four touchdown passes. Weapons outside with Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders. He knows what he's doing. Okay, Paxton Lynch, first-round pick. Good luck getting the job away from him. Now a carry. It's C.J. Anderson. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. And yeah, let's look quickly here at the Denver offense. A team that was consistently in the top five just a few seasons ago. They finished 27th overall in offense in 2016. A combination of uncertain line play and inconsistent quarterback, I think, led to that ranking. Now it's second and seven. Again, Anderson. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 at a Denver first down. Charles, after two weeks, C.J. Anderson, second behind only Kareem Hunt in the rushing yardage category, had 118 last week. How about that? How about those names leading the rushing yardage totals in the NFL? Kareem Hunt, third-round pick out of Toledo. C.J. Anderson, I believe, undrafted out of Cal and has really made a nice return from knee surgery last season. So big time return for him. He's really powering Denver's running game. First down, here's the run with Anderson. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Let's go. They run. Anderson. A swift move, but not a ton to show for it. Tackle just on the other side of midfield. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. And we take a look now at the defense for the Raiders. Well, sometimes the numbers really don't tell the full picture because Oakland was 26th in total defense in 2016. But guess what? They were tied for first in turnover margin at plus 16 with Kansas City. 
that makes up for a lot of other issues when you're able to take the ball away. So second down was a run play. Now let's see what they do on third. Play fake to Anderson. Now Simeon. And this is going to be incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short. They elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short. But you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Now the second-year man from Syracuse, Riley Dixon, on to punt. Back deep for the Raiders, Jalen Richard. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. And not great starting field position here for the offense. On the carry, here's Marshawn Lynch. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Lynch with his first touchdown this last week in the silver and black, 75th touchdown of his career. The way that he carries the football and the way that he makes defenses almost back down at times because he's such a hard-charging runner gives him a nice kinship with his offensive line, doesn't it? Because he runs the ball the way that they block. So they share in each other's excitement and joy in how they play the game. And the fans liked his little dance on the sideline, by the way. I don't think the Jets were too happy with it. Though. No, no, they weren't. <laughs> but the bottom line was there wasn't much they could do about it because his team was winning, so he had the right to dance. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Throwing his car on third down. And oh, he coughs up the football near his own goal line. It's picked up by the Broncos. And he will score. Touchdown, Denver. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. here Brandon McManus for the point after and he's got it seven nothing Broncos the scoop and score always an exciting play in football and we witnessed it there grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And they've got to be still reeling from the events of a moment ago. What a turn on that last play. You knock it on the door. 
You're about to take it in. You think you're going to get some points on the board. Instead, you cough it up and watch them take it the rest of the way to the opposite end zone. That's a two-score swing that you just gave up. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And it's hauled in by Jared Cook. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pick up on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Second down, Lynch. Now this will go for five up to the 33. No surprise watching Marshawn Lynch scatter bodies as he runs, but I remember doing games of his at Cal. And I remember the moves, the jump cuts, the elusiveness, as well as the strength. They'll run it. Here's Lynch. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Well, if we had any questions, that run kind of answered him. He's still Marshawn Lynch. Hasn't lost a thing. Maybe running with a renewed sense of purpose and energy after that year off. Second down. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game, as we just saw there. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. gives to Marshawn and the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line they'll lose a yard that time and that's going to lead to a third down now that play was doomed right from the start he just about ran into every defender on that one didn't he it felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle The play sent him the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. From the gun, it's Carr. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. That's a sight that Denver fans are used to seeing. Passes falling incomplete against their defense. Number one in pass defense in 2016. Would they give up less than 200 yards per game? Yeah, 186. Only team in the league to allow less than 200 per contest. Elite cover guys and big-time pass rushers. On is the punter king to send it away. 
Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Now that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. He really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. On second down, Anderson showed off the power, but not much room to run. Brought down at the five. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game, but when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, a one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. Now it's the Chiefs all-time leading rusher. It's Jamal Charles on the carry. No gain there on the play, and that's gonna leave him with a fourth down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. Fielded at the 33. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt, and the Raiders will take possession. So out come the Raiders. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, Sometimes one guy can make a big time play and break through the barrier. They start the drive with Lynch. Able to spin free, and he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. to go here on second down. Carr going option right. Finds a seam inside the 40. And he's brought down. A Raider first down, 17 yards. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. First down. A right side catch by Crabtree. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37 yard line. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage.
A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Shotgun now for Carr. And Cook has it, left side. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A Raiders first down, Carr hooking up with Cook. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. here on first down and that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown Michael Crabtree a 24 yard touchdown and the Raiders they're within an extra point of tying this thing up and when the quarterback drops and has a guy that wide open in the end zone his eyes have to get just as big as grapefruits oh without a doubt I mean, this is the easiest throw you're going to get and you're going to get the benefit of a touchdown on top of it make that throw Point after try, forthcoming. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with an Oakland touchdown. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. Cody Latimer now on the return. <laughs> and he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? down throw Simeon Sanders has it over the middle and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage Takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Second down, here's Simeon. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Sanders. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. 
A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. here on first down incomplete but a penalty flag is down in the backfield let's get the call offense. they were looking to throw Still holding on the big right tackle that's real simple partner keep your hands inside in the chest area you're probably okay you get it out on the shoulders get them wide usually gonna pick up a holding call complete to Virgil Green and he'll go down here at the 35 yard line a good pickup after the penalty 12 yards and it's second down a touchdown apiece here in this first quarter of play seven all is the score Charles and I back to Denver after this Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. Field. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Now that was impressive by the defense. They just got hit for a big pass play, and instead of rushing out and getting back deep to cover, they played their techniques, saw the run develop, and ran to it and made the play. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. For play action. Simeon. Got him in. He finds Sanders. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Emmanuel Sanders, 38 yards. And the Broncos have taken the lead. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Now McManus for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. That time, a six-play drive, and it ends with a Denver touchdown. McManus on to kick this one off. On the return, here's a dangerous Cordero Patterson. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line.
The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Start on the ground with Lynch. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled except for the one the offense really wanted to run through. And that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. They'll keep pounding here with Ledge. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The Raiders on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. From the gun. Car. And that is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously, one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Here's Marquette King now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Trevor Simeon and the Broncos heading back out. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Second is Simeon. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Sanders. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Both Sanders and his running mate, Demarius Thomas, have been over 1,000 yards each the last three seasons. Demarius Thomas takes care of a lot of stuff downfield. Emmanuel Sanders likes to work inside, inside the margins. Great compliment for each other, aren't they? Yeah, they work very well together. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. And he's taken down, but not before picking up the first, thanks to a flashy little spin move. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Here we go. Three, 
They run again on first down. Anderson. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? Simeon now in second down. A dump off for Charles. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Give him nine on the play. And just like that, it's third down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just, I, they move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. The Broncos on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and three. Short yardage situation, here's Charles. And now running right through it. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. He's gone over 1,000 yards five times in his career, but he's at the 30-year-old mark, and there's a lot of concern about running backs over the age of 30. Five yards are better for carrying each of his first eight seasons. Now past 30, we'll see if that trend can continue. to the ground this time it's Anderson and he's going to be met at about the 43 two yards on the carry there it'll be second down in order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4 those three guys up front the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends they're usually big big people because they're gonna have to eat up a lot of blockers because usually five on three and when they do their job well guys who play on the inside those inside linebackers they will just roam and hit Simeon. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. He was trying to get it to Benny Fowler that time. And that takes us from second to third down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Broncos on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. A shotgun snap for Simeon. Now Simeon stripped. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. Marshawn Lynch heading back out into the huddle. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, 
It's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. Let's see if he can look and do some soul searching now. And tough starting field position here. Carnell on first down. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. 14 yards is the pickup there at a Raider first. and 10. Here's Carr. It's hauled in by Lee Smith. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in and picks up the first down. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. A tenth carry of the game for Marshawn Lynch. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The Raiders on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and five. Operating from the gun, Carr. This one left side caught by Patterson. Carr fighting Patterson there for a Raider first. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Here's Carr, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. That'll bring up second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Gives to Lynch on the draw. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? To throw on third down. Carr. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. It's not going to end in points, but you know, you consider where this drive started. You probably label it a success. I, I do. And I know that without points, it's hard to say that a drive truly was a success. But think of it this way: changing field position, maybe giving your defense a little bit of a break. And 
And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Trevor Simeon ready to retake the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. First down at Simeon. The catch is made. Benny Fowler. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 18 big yards on that one and a Denver first. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. So here we go, first and 10 now. Out of the gun, Simeon, and that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Pass interference, defense. So the contact came before the ball got there, and the flag is thrown. Timing is everything, isn't it? And it's so hard to cover these great receivers. They have such great body control, and they can fake you out. In this case, as you described, got there before the ball got to the receiver. Penalty flag had to come out. and 10, Simeon, and on the catch right side, this is Sanders, and he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46, give him nine there on the first down completion. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. From the gun, here's Shevian. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver. And it's third and short. I don't know about you, but I wanted to reach out of the booth and snatch that pass myself. That thing floated forever up there. And I think that threw off the timing of the receiver. That's why he couldn't get his feet down, even though he caught the ball. You know, Charles, I, I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, me I, too. I, for, for you. I, I wanted to see you reach out and catch that. Yeah, you've heard about my hands, huh? <laughs> Screen play, Anderson. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. down Simeon he throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas and now before this first down play we're going to get a timeout here 
As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. throw to me I didn't see anything open and this play just didn't look right from the beginning it did not I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away dangerous pass incomplete second and ten Simeon again toward the center of the field but it's incomplete a little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. The Broncos on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and ten. Let's go! Three and Again, Simeon. And that's incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. This from 44 yards out, left hash. And McManus able to put it through. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to 7. So it goes down as an eight-play drive, and they cap it with the field goal. Yeah, they were able to pick up a few first downs along the way, but they couldn't keep the momentum going all the way into the end zone. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Broncos heading back out onto the field. They're hoping to do what they did last time, force another punt. Last time it resulted in a field goal. We'll see if they can get another stop here, though. And the best defenses are in the business of preventing points and creating points. And that's exactly what these guys did on their last possession. Why? Because they got off the field on three and out, turned the ball over to their offense after the punt, and let them roll downfield and put the ball through the post for a field goal. Carry it's Lynch. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. From the gun, it's Carr. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. 
And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Second down now after the pass completion. On play action, it's Carr. Looking for Crabtree, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. That late in the clock, second quarter, why not just run it a time or two and get it into the locker room? What you're saying makes absolutely perfect sense. Run it and get out of there. But I'm just wondering if the pressure of today's NFL and the high-powered offenses that you're facing may have forced them into saying, let's try and get some more points. starting field position here for the offensive unit. After the interception, here's Simeon. The swing pass caught. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Virgil Green in the final seconds of the first half. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook, but even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff, because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, a long touchdown pass into the end zone. McManus on to kick this one off. This is taken at his four. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you on down to our studios in Orlando, where standing by is Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Broncos are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Raiders didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Crabtree's wide open, able to make the grab, and it's caught for the touchdown. Now first and 10, the Raiders tied up at seven. Simeon's on target here, and he ends up at their own 41-yard line before he stopped on the play. Later on the drive, Sanders has got nobody around him on the deep pass. And this play goes for a score. Now second and eight, here the defense will come up with the pick. And it's Tlaib who makes the play for this defensive stop. Now after that turnover, Green's by himself here, and that's a house call. 
Broncos push the lead to 17. Okay, Larry, a fairly one-sided first half as we get set to go in the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken at his four. Oh, look at the juke. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Derek Carr getting ready to go again on offense. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, want well, to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. quarter starts with a run from Lynch and he'll fight forward to about the 27 yard line now after the play now oh, it's Marshawn Lynch who appears to have been shaken up we'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Shotgun now for Carr. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. First down, Carr. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Michael Crabtree, the intended receiver, and now it's second down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. to the air on second down. It's Carr throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Seth Roberts, and yeah, that'll make it third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Throwing his car on third down. He finds Roberts complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And a nice gain of 21 yards. 
Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. That's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Second down following the run. Play action. Now it's Carr. They find some open field here. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And now a first down following that long game. Now a handoff here to his running back. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and goal. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line. And only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Second down, Washington looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. And this is caught. Crabtree. Touchdown, Raiders. Michael Crabtree, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Raiders get a score closer. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. It's up and good, so they claw back into it. 24-14 now. A 10-play drive that time, and it winds up in six points for the Raiders. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. 
Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offense's sails because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. Now a play fake here on first down. And the Raiders have got him. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Give him five yards on the run there, but it'll leave him with a definite third and long on the horizon. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Broncos on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 16. They'll fake the handoff. Now Simeon. And Fowler's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a big 32-yard play on third. Usually hitting a deep post pattern, as we just saw there for a big gainer, that's tough to do because you usually have a safety or two in the middle of the field. But if you hit enough crossers and underneath routes and curls, you start to get those guys creeping up, wanting to make plays on the football. It's the equivalent of a changeup in baseball. You show your other stuff, throw the changeup, and on that play, it worked for big yardage. Now Anderson. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Play fake to Anderson. Now Simeon. Left side here to Sanders. That one goes for 24 yards. And certainly a valuable tool to have in your kit, Emmanuel Sanders, and he's shown us quite a bit in this one. And that's why they want to use him immediately. You know they come out of the locker room saying, let's get the ball to him, get our offense jump started, and in this case, it's worked throughout the game. Thus, they have the lead. In the red zone this time. They give it to Anderson. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. And here comes play number six on this drive. They run it again with Anderson. And they'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. C.J. Anderson taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Broncos will extend their lead. 
Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, the second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's C.J. Anderson who tops it off with the touchdown run. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Michael Crabtree and company now heading back onto the field. Two touchdowns to his credit so far. Charles, I'm curious, do these wide receivers, what do they go in with each week? Is it different week to week for the goals that they personally set for themselves, do you think? I doubt that it's different from week to week. Maybe because of game plan, they know that one guy might be featured more than the other. But all in all, these guys are looking for 100 or more yards in, in receiving. But the biggest thing, getting into the end zone. And how about him? He's gotten there twice in this game. He has indeed. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Raider first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back, like it's lost, you can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. Throwing on first down is Carr. A right side catch by Crabtree. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Gives it off to Washington. And a loose football. It's picked up by the Broncos. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Time for us to spotlight C.J. Anderson. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage. And, again, that second score here in the third quarter. Detroit! Detroit! Following the fumble recovery, Simeon. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. 
One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Another tote here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Broncos on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and four. From the 50 at Simeon, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game, and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? They go play action here on first down. And he's going to go down. Back in his own five-yard line, it's a sack. That's something you see a whole lot of, a sack of Derek Carr and due in large part to a good O-line. Carr was sacked on less than 3% of his dropbacks last year, lowest in the league. Oakland knew it was important to take care of their quarterback. They picked up Donald Penn, Kelechi Osemele, and Rodney Hudson in recent years, and it's paid off. some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Nine yards on the game there, so from second and 19, now we've got a third and 10. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. The Raiders on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 10. On play action, now Carr. Letting one fly deep. For He's got a man, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That goes as a gain of 37 on third down. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Now the offense lining up first and 10. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense.
Car to throw on second down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's Raider football here, but they're on the short side of the scoreboard right now as we begin the fourth. Needs something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Now Carr, got to have this one. Now he'll go deep down the middle. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. A gutsy call by Jack Del Rio, but it does not pay off. And the Broncos are going to get the football back in great field position. A gutsy decision there at this stage in the second half in their own territory and a decision that they might regret. Can't wait for the postmortem. You know, this postgame press conference, because the questions are going to come fast and furious about this decision, no matter how the, how the game turns out, right? What were you thinking there? Why did you have a certain play call? Did, were you comp in your defense? Oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> it's yeah. going to keep coming up. Yeah, no matter the scoreboard, just tough to justify. And a great spot to start this drive from here. First down, here's the run with Anderson. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Here we go with second and seven. Again, Anderson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Denver has the first down, the play going for 15 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. All right, here we go. They run. Anderson. And he'll be brought down short of the 15, but a really good move on the run. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, 
That looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Screen pass to Charles. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. The Broncos on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and seven. Simeon. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Demarius Thomas from 19 yards away. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Five plays there on that drive, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. McManus on to kick this one off. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Car now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Throwing again. Carr. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. On third down, Carr. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one, 28 yards on the ground. 
You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Carnell on first down. Over the middle, he gets it to Patterson. 12 more yards there and another first down. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside, make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Again, it's Carr. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it that's going to be 15 yards. So they're operating in the red zone. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Raider linemen might have been moving. Offense. That's on the big guard, Gabe Jackson. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. On second down, Lynch. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. They get five on the run, but it leaves them with a tough third and goal forthcoming. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. They got to have six here. It's third and goal. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Raider linemen might have been moving. offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Car gonna throw. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back 
Good job declining that penalty. Their already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is going to be incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And the Broncos will take over on downs. Now we look at C.J. Anderson as he trots back out there and gets set to go on offense. And the numbers show the improvement. And this is kind of what we thought we would expect to see from him. I know we overanalyze these things sometimes, but what, what switch? What's flipped that switch? Sometimes I think when you're as great as he is, you just kind of roll out each game and expect good things to happen. And that's not always the case. Those guys on the other side of the ball, they're the NFL too for a reason. So maybe at halftime, he gets a chance to regroup, kind of get it back together, get a little extra resolve, <laughs> and now he's putting it into practice. They start the drive with Anderson. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Here's Simeon. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era. We think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Handoff comes to Anderson. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. He takes it down to the 42, a five-yard run. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Shot through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Second down to Anderson. Oh, and now he bowls him over. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I know we're in the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space, but there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle, and you know, late in this game, he wants a football in his hands. He's had a good day. Down. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. 
And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Solid gain of 18 yards and a Denver first down. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. Fresh set of downs here. Here we go now. Green through. Charles getting the handoff from Simeon. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Hurry up, here we go. Blue line it. Now they'll run on the draw. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block, it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? They run with Anderson. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. Third and long, it's Simeon. Green's got it over the middle. Needed more than three, but that's all they got. And it's fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. able to put it through and that will extend their lead even further so it's three more points and that widens things out even further here in the fourth hey in this league you can never have too much so if you're in range grab the three whenever you can Splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On second down, here's Carr. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On first down, Carr. Finds Roberts left side. A pickup of 10, and it's enough for an Oakland first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. So the offense has it first and 10. Shotgun now for Carr. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. Only people celebrating? The guys who just gave up that play. From the gun, it's Carr. And it's caught by Crabtree. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Time for a break. This one all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. to the line and get him set. Again, they'll throw with Carr. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve, and that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. And some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Raider linemen might have been moving. That's going to set him back five yards.
And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On third and long, it's Carr. He's going to let it fly. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's Marquette King now. He's been terrific so far. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. And Denver getting set to take the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. All right, and sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. Now a run with Anderson, and he'll be taken down at the 18. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. That one looks like he'll throw here. And down he goes. Brought down a Raiders sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. Simeon in need of something big following that sack, facing third and long. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Broncos are winners as we say so long from Denver.